Hello everyone, welcome to the course of business forecasting. Today, we will discuss the basic concepts of data driven decision making, also steps of data driven decision making and essentials of predictive analytics. When you enter into the course of business forecasting, you need some sort of basic understanding of data analysis or the requirement of predictive analytics. So, today we will focus these concepts or the requirements or the say ingredients of data driven decision making, basically the steps of data driven decision making and what are the important aspects that you need to know to start with the predictive analytics modeling or say business forecasting techniques. So, first question would be what is data driven decision making? It is nothing but it is a steps or you can say the methodology where you know you emphasize the use of data in terms of informed decision making by leveraging the sources of data or you know extracting the data insights what you do you study the data behavior the pattern and you make a better decision in terms of understanding the consumer behavior or the consumer requirement satisfaction competitive advantage operational efficiency as well as the market trend. So, it effectively through data driven decision making you actually understand the past behavior of the data the historical behavior of the data and you analyze that through different techniques of data, data analytics or say you know through a steps different type of you know modeling approach of data driven decision making or data analytics and you make a forecast for the future accuracy of the data what has happened in the past and through this DD DM or you can say the predictive analytics or the business analytics steps how you can make a forecast for the future. That is all put together I have given a coin called data driven decision making under the context of predictive analytics or you can say under the context of business analytics. Definitely we, we can talk about business analytics because predictive analytics or business forecasting is one of the pillar of business analytics. So, Definitely, if you see the right hand side benefits, if you look at the benefits here, I mentioned what are the benefits of data driven decision making or you know essentials of predictive analytics. Effectively, you shift from opinion and intuition based opinion or decision making to a data driven decision making. Major aspects here all will be your past data based on the behavior of the data, you can make forecast. You might have a question, sir, what is going to happen that we are totally rely on the past data, but in future, if something happens, some contextual event occurs or event happens then how will data will take care of that. We have a session for that also specific allotted session human judgment the contextual event through experts opinion field experts opinion how the integration of the past data behavior and the future aspect the prediction can be integrated together and you can make a forecast for that also. We will discuss that on that particular session, but today overall majorly in the entire session of business forecasting or the entire module of modules of business forecasting will be concentrated majorly past data behavior, their pattern, understand the data pattern which will provide the insights to the managers through identifying the trend, seasonality and different type of you know random behavior etc and make the forecast for the future accuracy or the business models, operational efficiency, market trend, consumer taste, behavior and the competitive advantage. Look at here, drive business decisions with better confidence. You will get to know through data, we'll, I'll show you through different case illustration, we'll get to know how through data analytics, also through data different decision making, you can really take a informed decision and make a, bring a better confidence in your decision making or in a business strategy which will not only give you the competitive advantage, also it will improve the customer experience. Starting from the you know morning when you start taking the tea or breakfast from there itself you know whatever you know Unilever you start with the you know Nestle or you know whatever product Tata tea you start from that morning company actually starts understanding the consumer behavior, consumer need, consumer requirement for that they need data. Since company has the data or in case they collect the data or you know extract the data or consumer taste, consumer behavior, requirement etc. Probably if they do the analysis or you know to some extent data analytics techniques and tools they apply on that particular data, probably they can get a, get a better customer experience as well as the competitive advantage also. Even you imagine whatever I have talked about the FMCG products say Hindustan and Liver. You start from there in the morning even at the end of the day when you go to the bed for sleep, effectively you use the sum of the product of Hindustan and Liver or any, any particular you know, FMCG product. So, 
this is one sector I am talking about that every day we need, we use them and their companies are using this data driven decision making or business analytics aspects to get a better insights and to remain sustainable in the competitive you know market. So therefore, the first question is that what are the steps involved in data driven decision making? There are three pillar I talked about that first is the descriptive analytics, second is the predictive analytics, third is the prescriptive analytics. If you think about descriptive analytics, there our main objective is to understand what has happened in the past. It is nothing but the exploratory data analysis. Today we will discuss all three steps with examples or you know with basic understanding one by one. But first let us think about descriptive analytics. These three put together descriptive, predictive and prescriptive. You can classify more in a diagnostic analytics, analytics also. But overall generally people divide the entire data analytics steps or the analytic, like, you know, business analytics process into three, three dimensions. One is the or you know three pillar. You can say descriptive analytics. What it talks about? It, it says that the in the past how you understand the data that happened or in the past how the data behaved that you try to extract. That is called exploratory data analysis. Through that or descriptive statistics, through that you can create a dashboard, you can use some you know different type of graphs and you can see the you know basic you know, statistical models like you know mean, variance, standard deviation and you can get to know the pattern or the you know scatter plot etc. You can get to know the data behavior, data pattern that is called simple descriptive analytics. And then you go to the next level, once you know the data pattern behavior, then you make the forecast, the prediction that is called the predictive analytics. Based on the data behavior past, you try to make what is going to happen, what could happen. So that is nothing but the predictive analytics and there we will use different models techniques of business forecasting. In our particular course of business forecasting, we will be majorly focusing on the predictive modeling or predictive analytics. There are another components that is called another module that is called prescriptive analytics. What prescriptive analytics does? It actually focus that the strategy of the decision based on the descriptive statistics or descriptive analytics and the predictive analytics, predictive modeling or the forecasting plan. Once you have both in your hand, then you take a decision that what could pres what prescription you should provide to the organization or to the company so that you can make a better strategy and the competitive advantage. That we call it is of what should we do. That means what strategy, what decision making should come in your hand. There are methods like optimization techniques, I will discuss details today, optimization techniques, simulation modeling, multi creator decision making and different type of you know game theoretical approach or the you know utility theory or you can say risk analytics models through that you can take really some prescription to the, to the data that you have analyzed based on your description of the data, the pattern of the data and the prediction model that you have come up through that you can really take a recourse action or the strategical decision making that falls all this process falls under the umbrella of prescriptive analytics. We will focus through these courses definitely we will integrate this you know in our discussions process everywhere will which will integrate the concept of descriptive analytics as much as possible as well as the prescriptive analytics also. But our main concerns main, main understanding will be predictive analytics or you can say the forecasting in the context of business models, industrial problems or basic case studies related to the management. So with these three aspects in our mind, like you know you can think about, you can relate these three aspects with sustainability also. Generally sustainable management, sustainability practices are, are covered under three aspects. One is the you know economic sustainability and then environmental sustainability and social sustainability. But these three are linked but not one after another. But here when it comes to the analytics or business analytics or say you know to some extent data analytics, three these three aspects or three pillar, one is the descriptive analytics, second is the predictive analytics and third is the prescriptive analytics comes one after another or you can say they are very highly correlated. One until you com complete the understanding the descriptive analytics, you cannot start entering into the predictive analytics modeling and then you cannot make the prescription of the data or come up with a strategy. So all three are interlinked but to some extent it is a sequential. Once you know better of descriptive analytics, you can make informed prediction models or you can come up with a better prediction models with better accuracy. Once you come up with a better prediction, you can or the you know better forecasting, you can think about how much production you should do, what could be the you know distribution strategy, what could be your you know marketing plan that will come under prescriptive analytics. So these three are the aspects of data types or data analytics or you can say the business analytics processes. Then 
this, this part that I have mentioned in the left hand side effectively can be classified into 5, 6 steps of data driven decision making which we are going to understand through a examples of cases say or through different steps of the data driven decision making process. What is the first step? First step is that understand the case, understand the business problem. I will give examples you will get to know and then once you understand the case, the business problem that company has given to you or you are going to address that issue as a part of consulting or as in as a part of you know R&D team or you know data scientist team, what do you need to do? You need to understand the business case effectively. The better you know the business problem or understand go inside of the deep of the problem, better you can extract the data and better you can make the model and better you can make the forecast. So next all steps will be a subsequent steps. That the next step is nothing but once you understand the case, the business problem, the context of the problem, next step is that data collection and the data pre-processing. How we have collected the data, what are the sources of data, how reliable the data are, how authentic the data are, whether the ethical practices have been maintained or not. Once you know all these things, data collection process, I will discuss that, you will get to know like different steps of data collection or the process of data collection, type of data, whether primary, secondary. Once you know that and clean the data and make the pre-processing, all these things, you know, remove the old layers, these second steps are done now. So data collection and pre-processing are done now. Now you have to some extent, you know, your clean data you have, you understand the data behavior, maybe descriptive analytics you might have used to some extent over here or the statistical, you know, basic, you know, data modeling part or you can say the, you know, exploratory data analysis part you might have done little bit over here. You can use the SQLs and different sources of data, I will discuss that. And then once you complete the data collection, the pre-processing part, clean data with your, in your hand or you understand the data, you know, pattern, the behavior of these things, then you think about which prediction model which predictive model or the prescription model, predictive, prescriptive analytics models you need to call. That is called the model building. Remember the link, the connection that I have talked about the three steps along the three pillar like you know or say types, descriptive, predictive and prescription, uh, predictive analytics and how I am linking that with the data driven decision making process. Company or the industry people may not be understanding about these three steps or they know th these three you know types of data analytics but they know this you know data driven decision making process like you know business understanding, the case understanding, data collection process and model building, they might be using models but they do not think that this modeling process through the prospects, prospects of you know business analytics or say data analytics. So then model building is the major part which we are going to study as much as possible through our courses of different modules of business you know forecasting. Different prediction models, different you know time series analysis, regression analysis, simulation model, you know machine learning techniques, we will try to cover as much as possible you know ARIMA models through different type of you know examples, case illustration, numerical study and different type of you know technical aspects also we will cover under the model building. So this is nothing but the de design of the problem or the case that you are going to analyze, right. And once you get into the model building and once it is done, then next step is that you evaluate the model, testing validation of your model with the data that how much accurate the model is that you have developed or you have prepared and how strategically it is important to the company. So that called model evaluation. So maybe you know risk assessment can also be a part of that and, and to some extent monitoring control can also be part of that and over once all these things are done, you testing with the trial data and the tra training part are done and then you check how much accurate the model is providing and, and try to implement it. So this is called model evaluation and once that is done, next step is the deployment. That means you have developed something, you have designed some software, so you have designed some algorithm, you have designed some model, prediction model, whatever, you know, that you have to implement to the company, right? Because you are, you are addressing the case, you are doing as a part of consulting. So therefore, what you have to do that? You have to deploy the model to the organizations. So that is called the implementation pass, pass or you may, say, you may say that to some extent commissioning part. Once that is done, in this case, in the general project in the industry, what happens once the commissioning are done, you might not to go back much to look into that particular project, you can shift to the another projects. But in data analytics or the data driven decision making or even say in business analytics, what happens? You have to monitor the process also over a period of time. That means maintenance part is also very important because every day data are being generated. Based on the past data or say 3 years data, 4 years data, whatever the you know, model you have developed based on the behavior of the data requirement of the company strategy and the technology available with you, you can make, you can develop and you can implement and you can make the commissioning of the project, right? Or the you know, model that you have provided to the company. But after 2 years, you, your data might become obsolete, past data. You might have got new data which can give the new trend, 
new pattern, new requirement as per the competition is concerned. So, in that case, you have to redesign your structure, you have to upgrade your model with a new technology, new, new te AI process, new machine learning techniques, you, based on the more available data. So, you need to upgrade your model. That is called to some extent in this particular steps of DDM or, DM or data different decision making, it is called model maintenance. Otherwise, what happens, you know, like you can take the examples of Nokia, say, you know, so earlier it was very popular, but now they are not been adapted with the, you know, new technology, new demand, new customer tests, etc. They become, you know, obsolete in the market. Now they are not that popular. Remember, you know, you can think about, say, you know, Yahoo or, you know, Orkut. During our times, it was so popular as a social media platform. But now people are not using. Now because of you know new technology with the Google or you know in, with say Gmail or say you can say Facebook etc. This old you know that time it was very popular. But this this particular you know couple of examples that I was talking I am giving they are not you know relevant to the current society or the current current social media. Now the new technology new developed new software has come which you know customers are experiencing with a better taste and better enjoyment. So therefore they are available in the market. Who knows that you know tomorrow some new, new new technology will come and that particular Facebook also might become absolute. So therefore what happens in a, you know you need to focus about the model maintenance like you know upgradation of the data as the technology you have to, to put together so that you know even if new technology like chat GPT comes also into the market you remain sustainable your business models remain sustainable and you can remain competitive in the market also. So this all you know model maintenance starting from the business understanding data collection pre-processing model building model evolution model deployment and maintenance are the you know six steps of data different decision making. Look at the, the summary of the discussion that I have so far made under the business understanding process, understand the market trend and dynamics. Take any case, any examples in whichever domain you are working is not a matter. You think about say insurance industry, suppose, suppose you think about you know say supply chain industry, you think about say you know, chemical industry, anything, suppose or the financial industry, you think about say insurance industry. Understand the market trend and dynamics, who are the involved over there, you know, or the, the, the competition involved over there, or the market trend in the insurance industry, or say in a mutual fund industry, whatever you can you can think about that. Then you know, consumer behavior, knowledge and the preferences, that you have to understand. Look at as the business understanding increases in your mind also or in your in your experience also, effectively you will be able to make better forecast to meet the customer need and the competitive advantage. Then awareness of industry specific factors, what are the factors involved in particular industry, that also you need to know. So therefore, understanding the business case is very crucial before you make the data driven decision making. Without knowing that simple understanding a model and you know implementing it with the data may not be the best suitable decision making or the best strategy of decision making. Perhaps you need to understand the context in a better manner. Then familiarity with the historical sales data pattern data and the patterns of the data. So this is called you know data behavior analysis etc. And then once you know this all these parts then you understand the the external factors also this is very crucial you can imagine the point that this this you know this particular aspects in your decision making. If what what external like you know today suppose you know for example say some some European countries are fighting each other or say you know Middle East countries are fighting each other that will have a big impact in our crude oil price or you know in our say you know energy resources. So therefore if you are working on a project of energy or if you are working in a project of say you know to some extent addressing say mutual fund or say you know insurance industry where you know or say NBFC sector you have to think about what RBI is taking a decisions. You do not have any control on that what RBI will take the decision what Middle East is fighting each other among each other you do not have any control on that crude oil price may go up go down but you have to think about that external factor also in taking decision through this particular data modeling process. Then awareness of potential risks which I have mentioned already and then you know last part insights into the competitive landscape and the market positioning where you want to position your product where you want to position your you know particular company profile. So that is also, also that is the objective right that is the goal you have to be competitive in the market and you have to position your product with uh, the best quality and the best requirement and the customer requirement right. So therefore these steps are very important as far as business understanding concerned or the data different decision making is data different decision making process is concerned. Now let us come to the essentials of business analytics very crucial part. Remember I have discussed only the first step that means that means if you come back to this particular you know slides here I have discussed only the business uh, understanding part. So far we have discussed majorly this part. Now we will be focusing the name, name remaining steps one by one but before we focus on the remaining steps let us understand what are the essential ingredients or essential techniques or the process that you know 
as a part of descriptive analytics, predictive analytics and the prescriptive analytics. Let us go to that particular slides you will get to know. Look at here. I have now categorized three definitions, three, th three terms, descriptive analytics, predictive and the prescriptive. Look at the data types, data types, data collection process or the data that you have in your hand, whether it is a primary data or the secondary data. That you need to understand. I will discuss that in the forthcoming slide. Then once you know the data pattern and then you need this kind of couple of you know techniques or you can see the tools. If you know all these tools and techniques, I have put couple of, there are many more which I will discuss in the forthcoming sessions, even today also I will show you, maybe in the, after the break I will show you, you will get to know that the more you know the techniques and the tools of data analytics or the business analytics, probably the more you will be the stronger. So therefore, if somebody says that, you know, I know the business analytics, it means that or the techniques of data driven decision making or, you know, data science, you have to be kept in mind that whether you are aware of these techniques or not. If you know these techniques effectively with analytical concept, technical aspects and with the data modeling and the prediction process also or the strategy decision making also like the inference drawing process also, then only you will be able to become a stronger data analyst or the business analyst. So therefore, these are not only a limited topic of data science or you know say business analytics, there are many more but here I have listed couple of important techniques that you need to know that is called data collection and pre-processing of or the steps of that and the exploratory data analysis which may fall under business you know descriptive analytics or the statistical you know uh, data modeling part and then you know to some extent quality and decision making un under uncertainty also which can be a part of all three then statistical inferences which also can be a part of all three then supervised and unsupervised learning I'll discuss in the session of you know introduction to machine learning. You will get to know even today also I'll give basic in information about these two aspects also. Then classification and clustering very important. You know dimension reduction, different type of k-means clustering. You need to know them. The the more you know the these parts you know supervised and unsupervised learning and the classification and clustering process, the more you'll be strong around uh, you know data science part or business analytics expert. Then regression analysis as a part of predictive modeling, which we'll be discussing through our, you know, all these courses or the modules and the various types of time series modeling, whether it's, you know, moving moving average methods, whether it's, say, you know, different exponential smoothing models, seasonality, we'll discuss about ARIMA models, different type of, all type of time series forecasting we'll be covering through this particular course of business forecasting or essentials of predictive modeling or predictive analytics. Then different type of machine learning techniques also which machine learning is all put together can be put, put under the umbrella of machine learning but I have given a different term that machine learning and the AI process the, the most important trend today in the data science domain. And then text analysis when you have it say Twitter data or different type of you know qualitative data or the experts conversation etc or people are writing in the different text so that how can you extract that and you can make an informed decision by you know doing some you know, sentiment analysis that can be an important ingredient for data science or you know part of you know, data analytics and then you know decision analysis very crucial part where you know all these last four parts are majorly you know, including the statistical inference are nothing but the prescriptive analytics this falls effectively you know this falls here like these last four or five points including statistical inference like of decision analysis, say Bayesian analysis or say decision tree, random, all these things comes under you know prescriptive analytics. Optimization techniques, um, so linear optimization, non-linear optimization, mixed integer programming, dynamic programming which is, look at dynamic, I talked about, I am talking about dynamic programming. It looks very you know basic concept of the mathematical optimization models but it is one of the important techniques of you know AI process some different search algorithms, say particle sum optimization or say you know to some extent say ant colony optimization, genetic algorithm which are all important ingredients for you know recommendation system of AI process because they are, they are all recommendation system are based on the search algorithm what customer are searching and how this searching process or the customer behavior you can capture through the algorithms and then accordingly, accordingly you make the forecast or you uh, recommend the corresponding product or the corresponding the movie or corresponding the ad it is nothing but are nothing but the search based on the search algorithm. So that also comes on the different optimization and the decision making process or decision analysis process. Different multi criteria process also falls under the predict, uh, prescriptive analytics also. Like you need to make ranking of different supplier, ranking of different project sites, 
you can use the multi-criteria decision making based on the data group decision making you can take a decision which is all which are all uh, strategy decision making also you can use multi color simulation continuous version of simulation discrete voxel version of simulation i can you, you can actually address different complex problem through simulation process and you can take a informed decision or you can make a prediction or prescription through simulation process also so these are the major major you know modeling or the major you know chapter that you should know as a part of decision making or the business analytics or say data science if you know all this if you are expert on all these topics that i have mentioned here I, again i repeat these are not the limited there are many more techniques which you may need to understand and read or you know you need to gain knowledge about that on the whole these are the major important topics that you should know as a part of business analytics or the data driven decision making or say you know data science now let's enter into the essentials of predictive analytics so far i have given a holistic approach of data driven decision making and also you know essentials of you can say overall business analytics right like i have talked about descriptive analytics predictive analytics as well as the prescriptive analytics and different techniques also i have discussed now let us focus about the the core aspects of our course that is called business forecasting we will focus now to some extent or you know in depth of essentials of predictive analytics but if you talk about what is predictive analysis what you need to do actually it's in the it's a advanced branch of analytics that uses data statistical algorithms techniques machine learning techniques which i have discussed i'll be discussing further again to identify the future outcome help make the predictions in making predict better predictions and to make a decision for the future and the you know understand the consumer behavior and and plan a strategy accordingly so therefore predictive analytics are nothing but a decision making through data through which you understand the past behavior of the data and analyze the pattern of the data and make a forecast for the future of that particular event that you need to take a decision or need to take a strategy and meet the customers expectation in a better manner now couple of you know you know you can see couple of dimension or you can say couple of applied area that i have mentioned here where you can really use predictive analytics first look at the informed decision making here provide it provides the organizations with insights that enables informed decision and the data driven decision making by by which you can help in staying competitive as well as adapt to change conditions or the overall you know informed decision making it helps to take a informed decision making then risk mitigation through that you can really throw data analytics effective predictive analysis effectively you can meet the risk assessment in a better manner also you can you know mitigate the risk and challenges also whether it's a finance whether it's a marketing whether it's a healthcare whether it's a you know project management whether it's a even even imagine project management industry in project management industry risk mitigation is one of the most important part and in that case if you don't mitigate risk with the appropriate data analytics techniques or the predictive analytics models your forecast about the budgeting your forecast about the cost your forecast about the timing will be wrong effectively what will happen your model will not be resilient so if you want to come up with a better resilience models with better recourse plan or a better you know project execution strategy with with appropriate with to meet the timeline you need to mitigate the risk and the associated challenges effectively for that you need to come up really some good prediction models for example say you know cost estimation process you can think about earned value management you can think about you know some efficient frontier techniques you can think about uh, you know uh, decision tree analysis which will help you in mitigating risk then resource optimization it is also very important because you know you have to you optimize your resources effectively and allocate the resources in an effective manner right so it helps actually optimize resource allocation by providing accurate forecast of the demand enabling business to manage inventory production and workforce effectively so the effect effectively when it comes to the optimization process that is prescriptive modeling but you need to think about effective forecast right if you do have effective forecast of your demand like you know to some extent inventory management planning the safety stock planning probably you will be able to do better about your you know uh, procurement planning you can do better your production planning and the managing of the workforce also so it is effectively op you are doing optimization or resource optimization but based on your prediction right based on your demand planning etc 
So, this is also very important part of predictive analytics. Then you know operational optimization also, it effectively the better if it if you know if you go to any supply chain courses or you know any operational course strategy courses, you will get to know that effective demand planning or effective forecasting whether it is a manufacturing sector or supply chain planning or you know you know to some extent optimization of operational or the strategy or the whether you know strat tactical process, strategical process and the operational process, you need to focus about the you know better planning through prediction models. In any segment of you know supply chain, you think about whether HLN1 or up, up, upstream supply chain or downstream supply chain, you need to focus about your better prediction models so that you can optimize your operation and the better coordination about and bringing efficiency into the model. Then customer retentions, unless you do a better prediction model, you cannot maintain your customer retention. So, churn management is one of the most important aspects in, in marketing or you know even in, in, in business strategy domain. So, therefore, it helps in identifying factors that contribute to the customer churn. By understanding customer behavior, businesses that can improve the strategies to retain the valuable customers. So, with predictive analytics or the data analytics, perhaps is most important, most efficient, most required for you know customer retention. If you do not use data analytics, if you do not use predictive modeling, perhaps you will lose the market share. So, most of the companies whether it is in Amazon or whether it is you know our Indian companies also, you know everybody is utilizing this data analytics in their decision making. So, that even what customers are going to make give the order in the next week, you know Amazon is doing some AI process and the data analytics techniques. So, that they can understand that this type of products customer is going to give repeated order in the forth, in the forthcoming week. So, let us prepare or store this particular product for this particular customer. That means, they know the data behavior of the customer's behavior of the and their past you know buying pattern based on that using data analytics, they are trying to make forecast that this customer is going to give this particular order in future week or forthcoming week. So, let us plan or keep the required documents or details products for him so that her so that you know immediately we can deliver the product to the requirement of the customers. So, this is this way you can improve your customer retention also. So, this is one of the important aspects of predictive analytics which will help you in maintaining your customer retention. There are many more applications like I talked about insurance industry right or the banking sector. Everybody is utilizing their you know data analytics techniques over there. The those who are utilizing data analytics they are actually you know efficient, efficient are maintaining their market share otherwise they might lose the market share also. So, let us take a break now and after the break we will we'll continue the topic of essentials of predictive analytics and the steps of data different decision making.